Welcome to the Plant Free MD podcast with Dr. Anthony Chafee, where we discuss diet and nutrition and how this affects health and chronic disease, and show you how you can use this to optimize your health and happiness, both mentally and physically. Everyone, thank you for joining another episode of the Plant Free MD. Today, I have a return guest, my good friend, Phil Escott, calling all the way over from the UK. Phil, thanks for coming and joining us. Well, thanks for having me on, Anthony. It's, it's great to be back on. And, yeah. you know, thanks. Thanks for having me on before. And, I, you know, I don't need to go too much into my previous story. I covered that before. But, uh, yeah, I thought I'd come on with a bit of disclosure and a warning for autoimmune people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a cautionary tale for, for those with autoimmune issues. So you went through a bit of, of troubles this past year and uh, thankfully straightened things out. But uh, yeah, maybe maybe walk us through that and uh, maybe we can, can learn something on on uh, how to best manage uh, their issues. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, last time I was on, I went through the story of, um, you know, how I originally got it. I was really crippled with psoriatic arthritis back in 2010. Mm. And then I, I did my vegan phase, lost most of my muscle, then discovered keto and kind of got halfway there. And, you know, from 2013 or so, 2014, when I wrote my um, arthritis, best thing that ever happened to me book. And I was kind of almost there, but I didn't go fully carnivore till 2015. And then things were great for years and years. And, you know, I thought, you know, this is this is fantastic. I've uh, I've sorted everything. And, um, you know, I've um, I, I, I've fixed the gut. I can I can take some liberties. And so last year I took some liberties. Now, I didn't eat any plants, had enough of them. I don't want to eat that, that stuff. But, um, yeah, I was traveling around a lot, you know, and I was playing with the Daz band. We had this number one single a couple of years ago. And, um, you know, I won't even mention the lyrics of it because we'll get the channel pulled down. But we weren't particularly we weren't particularly complimentary about the um, the whole business that went on with sticking stuff in people's arms and all sorts. But um, it got to number one. We got Shadow Band and whatever, and they soon got that off the charts. But um, I, I had some festivals to play and traveling around. And I thought, right, I'm okay. You know, I have a bit of a rock and roll lifestyle. I'll, I'll drink a few too many brandies. I'll smoke a few spliffs. I'll do that. But, you know, I don't think that's what did it. I think it was, uh, well, we'll come on to the Oxalate thing in a while. But I, I think what happened was I, I decided that, you know, it's very difficult, isn't it, to get really good meat when you're on the road. It's it's easy to get chicken, pork. It's easy to get eggs. It's easy to get cheese. And so I was probably eating too much of that sort of thing. And I thought, well, it's all right, you know, and I, I was putting a bit of fat on. I mean, I was nothing like I was. Can I share the screen a sec? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Make sure you can. Yeah. Are you able no, to there's a, uh no, it says it's still disabled. Let me just but I think on the share screen button you can allow screen sharing. But I just thought I'd show this one quickly because I didn't last time. Okay. I, I think I've given you There we go. There. Can you see that? Yep. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, that, yeah. that was um that was me. 2010 on the left, probably 2011 on the right. Wow. And that was when I, I'd really messed up. I'd never shown the before or after before, but you know, that was, that was the last time. It's funny around that time, my, my, um, ex-wife, um, went to, um, India and went to see an Ayurvedic doctor, uh, Vaidya, and showed a picture of me and said, and he said, some people can stay healthy when they're a bit overweight, but he can't. Give him a few years and he's going to be really, really sick. Well, I didn't really take that into account. I didn't know what to do about it in those days anyway. Um, and so um, he was right. That was probably, I don't know, 2005 or something. And so 2010, yeah, I was in real trouble. There it was. And then I kind of went vegan and then discovered the keto thing. But I mean, that's 90 pounds down in about, I don't know, eight months or something like that. Wow. And it, it was just after that picture was taken that I got really, really sick. But anyway, I've seen that. and will get rid of that thing. But um, yeah, so I, I I kind of put on a bit of weight last last year. Nothing nothing like you know. I still had a flat stomach and whatever. But it was in the back of my mind. I thought, I wonder if I'm just not designed to carry any fat. You know, eating dairy and stuff like that. It it, it can do it. 
And then I came back from the last festival and a few days, a few days later, it was a real stressful year, loads of money weirdness and selling rental houses and sales falling through. And it was one of those hideous years, you know, it probably all of it added up. But, you know, I started to get some bit of a, a, a sort of a niggle in one knee. And I thought, well, you know, if I ever eat anything wrong, all I need to ever do is just do a day's fast and then come back onto the program, it disappears. I'll be fine. It did not get fine. And it was like, it wasn't a flare. It was a supernova, you know, and I, I, I dropped 45 pounds that I didn't want to drop at the time. I was 165 pounds, went down to 120 pounds. I was completely Jeez. emaciated, you know, five foot 10. Wow. And um, I was confined to the sofa. You know, I couldn't stand. I was on crutches if I did. I I, I was, um, the pain even at rest was horrific. Uh -huh. um, but I thought, ah, well, you know, whatever's happened. And it started off actually uh, late last summer with a kidney stone. And I thought, but I haven't taken any oxalates for ages. Just the old, like over again, over this last year, the old cheat with a bit of chocolate or something. Mm -hmm. I thought that's not enough to do that. And I had Sally Norton on my podcast a little while ago. And I said to her, well, is it possible like eight years into carnivore, you could have a real oxalate dump? Mm -hmm. And I don't know. It's just one of the theories. And she said, oh, yeah, it is. So I wondered with the, if it hadn't have started with a kidney stone, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. Mm -hmm. But I did. And I was lying on the sofa there and I thought, I'm supposed to be this carnivore sort of arthritis guru. And here I am wasting away in tremendous pain. This is embarrassing, man. Anyway, it was it was lucky actually because I mean previously it took me about three years to get out of that mess, and this time it took me about three months. Mm. But it was because I had the confidence, you know. And this this is a kind of a, a warning to to autoimmune people. And and I was chatting to Zofia as well, you know, yesterday on my podcast as well. It's going to come out soon. We're on a real deep dive into autoimmunity, and I think I think she's honestly right, particularly about dairy. You know, you can get the odd flair from pork and chicken if you're autoimmune, if it's bad stuff. But, mm -hmm. you know, dairy, I, I, I'm starting to re I've always thought it's kind of dodgy and advised anybody who comes to me for a consult not to do the dairy. But, you know, Sophia saying that um, even a few molecules can keep it going and, you know, it can it can have it repercussions for years if you filled yourself full of dairy is mm -hmm. absolutely fascinating with all the, the sort of growth factors in it. But yeah, I just had to go completely PKD, fully beef lamb, fatty beef lamb, salt and water, and that's it. And gradually, gradually, it 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 it, it uh, turned itself around. But you know, I see a lot of people who are who go beef lamb, salt and water, and it doesn't stop immediately. You know, it's like stopping a ferry, isn't it? Even if the gut's healed, you can still have these sort of repercussions of it, sort of um, little flares along the way, and it goes up and down, up and down. And it's to really give people confidence that, you know, they, it, it was yeah, at one point, my my missus, who is a who is a nurse, she took some bloods, took them down to the doctor. I, I didn't want their interpretation on me. You know, I, I wanted to look at them and, and I wanted to send them to Zofia as well to sort of check there's nothing really horrific going on, um, you know, beyond the autoimmunity that I'm familiar with. And of course, the docs, you know, they called me up and everything. They said, no, you probably got cancer and all of this. This is really bad. This is, you know, the, the GP said, look, I haven't. And listen, even if you've lost that much weight in that short time, yeah, you probably got cancer. Okay. Like, you know, no, no, I haven't. I said, I know what's going on here. And um, even if I did have cancer, I'm not going to do anything that, that you recommend. So just thanks. Thanks for the results and all that, you know. I'll uh, I'll send them to Zofia, and she said, "Yeah, you know, it's it's just horrific inflammation." But I mean, to give you an idea, my CRP when I wrote that book was like, well, when I wrote the book about the times when I was sick before, it was like when it was tested, it was like about eighty-five, which is horrific. But back in November last year, it was one hundred and ninety-two CRP. That's crazy. Hey guys, just want to take a second to thank our sponsor at Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly, all you need to be healthy is to just eat meat. But for those times that you're out hiking, road tripping, or stuck at work and you want a nutritious snack that is just meat, fat, and salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. So I like this product not because it's just pure meat, but also because I want the Carnivore Market to thrive as well. And the more we support meat-only products, the more meat-only products there will be available in the mainstream. So if this sounds like something you'd like to get behind, Check it out using my discount code Anthony to get 10% off, which also applies to subscriptions, giving you 25% off total. All right. Thanks, guys. 
You know, that was on fire. I mean, that, that, that's the one with, with, with you know, septicemia in the, in the ICU. You know, that's the. I know. That the only time, the only time, high CRP. You know. Yeah, the only time I've seen that anything like that was my mum when she was dying of pneumonia, and the hair was like two fifty. Yeah, and and you know, I thought, whoa, that's a beast. No wonder I felt that much pain. Mm. But it was a it was a real severe one, and then I had it done again. I, I think in a month, and it was nineteen. And I didn't ha- I didn't do it after that, but it came down pretty fast. And and I now I don't know. I don't know what I am now. I t- I feel fine. I'm fine. But and then the, you know the weight started coming back on, and it was funny because uh, uh, people were saying you, you know. Um, Oh, don't go on Zoom. Don't do anything. Don't don't go on any on your YouTube channel. And I thought, no, I got to be honest, man. You know, I I'm, I'm going to be open about this, and I'm I'm going to show myself looking like that. <laughs> and, and, Look how much and weight so, I lost. Dramatic carnivore weight loss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I put back on a, a good sort of 15, 20 pounds now again. You know, in that time. I managed to get training again. I'm not going to put any fat on anymore. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've actually uh, actually got some legs to go in my trouser legs now, which I didn't have before. You know, it's annoying because it was particularly uh, horrific looking down at those stringy legs because, you know, late 90s, I ran a gym. And I remember a time when I used to, you know, and after all these sort of uh, extensive periods of 20 rep squatting and I used to have to buy jeans that were too big for my waist to even get my quads in, you know? And so for me, it was, you know, you probably know the problem there, right? Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and so to look down at, at, at legs that were like a string and then a lump and then a string, it was like, you know, it's taken some coming back from that. So, but I, I think just to, just to give people to come on here and give people real confidence that, that whatever you, whatever you're going through, this, I did a lot of other things. I got all the lights sorted. I was grounding as much as possible. I was doing all my woo-woo emotional stuff and all that kind of thing and, you know, just chilling out. But really, that magical place of just beef, lamb, salt, and water, if you're autoimmune or even if you've got better from autoimmune and got things still niggling, get on it. It's it's the, the difference between regular carnivore with a bit of pork, chicken, a bit of eggs, a bit of dairy, and proper you know, lamb, beef, salt, and water, really fatty, the sort of PKD approach, it's night and day. Mm-hmm. It, it really is night and day. I mean, the improvement is greater from crappy carnivore to, to that really pure carnivore to uh, the, than it can be sometimes from a regular diet to to carnivore, including dairy and stuff like that if you're autoimmune. And, yeah, a huge eye-opener for me. And it was funny. We did we did this big fat challenge. It was called a big fat challenge because we were, you know, Ben Hunt and I were trying to set up something for people to come along and have calls every day. And and, and, it, it, and it was it was for the big fat bit was to get people aware of animal products, you know, animal fats and how healthy they are and that kind of thing. That was why it's called the big fat challenge. We went into all the other stuff, too. But it's funny, so it's documented from the 1st of January, and you can see me come on there looking like skeletal and then sort of filling out as it goes along. And, and now, you know, with building some of this muscle back up, I'm fine. I like this level of leanness now. It feels really good again to, you know, have um, be pulling in my belt on trousers and stuff like that. You know, I got like a 30-inch waist again. It was like 28 at one point. It was just too little. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it's nice to be there again. But that was basically the story of what happened. And, and and just to say to people, you know, take care because it's funny. Sometimes the body can go, do you know what? You're going to get a big slap. And if you built up some of these toxins or whatever it is that goes in there, I mean, you know, I, I'm still after studying it for so long, I'm still kind of unclear on exactly the mechanism of what causes autoimmunity causes these flares. Is it molecular mimicry? Is it toxins accumulating in certain parts of the body? Is it, but whatever it is, you know, that PKD thing really does seem to seem to nail it. So, yeah, that was what happened to me. Well, I mean, well, that's pretty scary. You know, I mean, you lost so much weight that, that that's, I mean, literally very dangerous amount of weight loss. Yeah. And, and obviously uh, being as, as weak and in pain as you were not being able to get off the couch. I mean, that's, that's quite scary. Um, so it was, it was the kidney stone that then triggered you. It was like, okay, wait, this is, this is something that I've, I've got to change and I've got to really go strict on this or, or. No, no, it was, it, it was a joint pain. I mean, I thought okay. the kidney stone, I mean, I, I thought I'd already looked a whole load into oxalates and, 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 and whatever. And I remember when I had a kidney stone in like 2012, 
Mm-hmm. It was kind of obvious to me now that I was going to get one because I was doing almost lethal doses of spinach smoothies every day. You know, <laughs> I was I was I was putting a whole pack of spinach in, and then because it tastes so fucking awful, Ugh. I was putting all this other stuff in. You know, like avocados, bananas, a load of honey, all that sort of thing. But I was also thinking, oh, let's throw a load of turmeric in there as well and whiz up some almonds. I mean, I, I don't know anyone who's done as as much uh, oxalate loading as I have during that period. Yeah. It was horrific. Um, and so it was it was pretty much predictable that soon after that I'd have a kidney stone. It was like kind of a 12 miller, you know, and it got stuck in the ureter and I had to have it, you know, a laser up my knob and get it lasered out and broken up. <laughs> and it was, it was uh, and then I thought, hey, great, I'm free of that at least, you know, I've got rid of it and whatever. But I'm thinking if I was dumping oxalates back then, if oxalates, if oxalate dumping is an actual thing, which again, I'm, 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 I'm Sort of, I, I'm open minded to because I, Sophia yesterday was going, Oh, no, it's not, it's not like that, it's not an issue. And I had Sally on, you know, mm-hmm. who's saying, Oh, yeah, of course you can dump, you know, and have all these horrific issues. But uh, back then, I, I thought, Yeah, it's kind of obvious that, that that's what's happened. But this time, I thought, I haven't taken in any. And then I thought, Hang on a minute, actually, the body can dump really slowly. I could have had a kidney stone building up for years there, even from the spinach smoothies years before. Mm. if some of the theories are correct. So I thought, oh, well, that's okay. You know, maybe that's it. Maybe that's done. I don't know whether the the joint thing had anything to do with an oxalate issue. Mm. Maybe it did. Maybe it was was just the dairy and and triggering the autoimmunity again that decided to come on in a a very sudden and very severe form. But in, um, you know, it was also around the autumn equinox. And I think... um, you know, that is a time when a lot of people get sick. And so it was it was a lot of things kind of built up. That's a, a time of, you know, to go into the woo-woo side. It is a sort of natural detox time of the body. Mm-hmm. And and I think a lot of people get sick around there, which is why, you know, some people, some people, not that they ever have, of course, but some people might be able to around that time, maybe say fake a pandemic or something like that. But, um, <laughs> you know this uh this sort of thing can happen around that time so you know who knows who knows what it was but uh, hopefully no more kidney stones i mean i did have a scan on it i tell you what it was it was quite cool actually when i went down with the uh <laughs> for the for the kidney stone thing because i thought I, I was in real pain mm. and i thought uh, i'm gonna have to go and figure it out it would just come with being atta- attacks it wasn't constant but it was horrific you know my kids one day they were going are you going to die, Daddy? I'm going, no, I know what's going on. I'm not going to die. Yeah. But I was rolling around the floor, and you can't get comfortable in any position. You're bending over the chair, like sitting down, standing up. It's horrific when it's going on. Mm. But um, I went to see this uh, urologist, and he was really cool. You know, I went to this sort of – I got this private consult because I didn't want to wait for the NHS. And I went down to this this place, and I was his last consult for the day. And I went in and uh, he he was very cool and he he had his COVID muzzle on, you know, and um and I said to him on the way to the to the office, and I said, Listen, man, don't, you can take that off, please. Don't don't wear that for me. And it's like and he went, Oh, oh thank God for that. You know? <laughs> we had a chat, we had we had a chat about all that stuff. Well, I thought this guy's pretty cool. Yeah. And um, you know, I was I was it was before the joint thing hit, and so I was really jumping around perfectly mobile, looking healthy and all that. And um and I got chatting with him and you never get this with an English doctor. You get two minutes, five minutes or whatever. Yeah. We were there for an hour and a quarter chatting about carnivory. Nice. It was amazing. And he was brilliant. And, and and then he said, you know, thank God for that. You know, I, I've got something now I can tell my, um, my secretary who is, uh, who's a vegan, you know, <laughs> and then he told me later, he told me later that um, his secretary had been following my channel and everything and, and was, oh, wow. was starting to come around and he was starting to come around and really, really getting into it. And then I put them onto your channel and he'd been watching, he'd been watching you and he'd been watching Sean and all of that. Yes. And it was really cool. But anyway, he told me, yeah, you know, you, you, it's one kidney stone. That's it. it. There's no sign of them anywhere else. So I thought, right. Okay. Got rid of that one. Um, and uh, no bother. So, but it, it is interesting to think that even after all these years, if Sally's right and some other people with these um, with these plant toxins, because I mean, I, I often share your plants are trying to kill you video because you've just nailed it there. I mean, I thought I knew about plant toxins, but uh, you know that's a popular one to share with people. <laughs> but it, it's years later that you can still suffer the repercussions 
of, yeah. of, of these things. And, and that's no reason not to go carnivore. I mean, mm. you, you know, there's a, there's a, there's an old saying, isn't there? The best time to plant a tree is 40 years ago. And the next best time is today. <laughs> so, so, so just do it, you know, even if you're going to get these issues, you get through them, but um, wow. Yeah. So here I am, the, 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 the ultimate example of how to poison yourself properly on veganism and how long it can go on. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a good, it's good, it's good testimony as well. And and also, you know, I mean, we, we sort of you know, said as a cautionary tale, I think it is, you know, because there are, there are some people like yourself and, and others who are, are just very, very sensitive and uh, to anything outside of that PKD diet, just the red meat and water diet, even, even other meats and dairy, especially I've, I've seen a lot of that with patients with dairy. They don't, they don't handle it very well on a, on um, autoimmune when they have autoimmune issues you know even uh, michaela peterson you know she says that you know she has pork it's like worse than if she eats fruit you know she and she really yeah. reacts badly to it and this is years years and years and years down the track so you know i think it's you know it, it is difficult to say exactly what's causing these sorts of things but whatever it is it's in the food and uh, and eliminating that and just going just just to you know beef lamb salt and water seems to help. And, you know, some people are a bit more stubborn. They need, you know, grass fed beef or lamb and uh, grass finished, I should say beef or lamb, but um, you know, whatever it is, it's something in there and something we're reacting to and something that's, that's causing harm. And just something that, that people sort of need to remember is that if you have one of these sensitivities and you're a bit more sensitive to things, you know, yeah, I think, I think just beef, lamb and water is probably the best thing that any of us could do. I don't have any of those problems, but I, I feel way better just eating that. And that's so that's why I naturally prefer to go to, but you know, people that, you know, don't have that luxury of being able to eat any meat that they want dairy on occasion or whatever, you know, the, it's, it's important to know that. And so, you know, people knew coming to carnivore, especially with autoimmune, you know, to try to help their autoimmune issues, you know, that's something that's, that's, I think, very important. You know, if someone's, if someone's new coming to carnivore, have autoimmune diseases, what would you tell them? How would you caution them? How would you have them approach uh, their diet? Well, it, yeah, it, it's, I, I, w I always try to get them to do this from the start. You know, I, I tell them that beef, lamb, salt and water really is the least traumatic thing that you can put into your body. Because a lot of people come to me with autoimmunity saying carnivore isn't working. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I've learned, I've, I've got some improvements a little bit, but it's not really working that well. And then every time it's one of those things, it's pork, chicken, eggs, dairy, or all of them, or not eating enough fat. You know, that 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 business of really keeping the fat high, according to the PKD ratios, is is a real game changer as well. A lot of people, I think they can still react to too much protein. If the gut's still leaky, maybe some of those proteins are getting through anyway, even if they're not the type of proteins that would wreck the gut, like glutens and whatever. Mm -hmm. So some of those are still getting through and you can still get a reaction to it. That's that's the kind of uh, view I have of it. But it's a shame, particularly with the pork, you know, because... I could just eat pork crackling all day. Yeah. I mean, it's the nicest thing in the world, isn't it? But, yeah. but no, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't go well with me, but strangely um, bacon isn't so bad, particularly if you get some good bacon, it's, it's okay. I can get away with that now and again, but not fresh pork for some reason. And uh, there was a good uh, article on, it's on zero carb Zen. If you put zero carb Zen pork in, if anybody wants to see that, and they've got some other, uh, it's a very old article there some other issues where, where, where sometimes the pork will, will uh, sort of um, thicken the blood or something like that and give some weird effects to some people. But I, I think a lot of this is down to the fact that the pigs are not fed what they're supposed to eat. You know, they do get fed a load of crap. They really do. And, you know, the first time I ever chatted to Zofia when my missus got diagnosed with Graves disease and she was saying, yeah, pork is great. It's all fatty and whatever. And I said, well, maybe not in this country, you know, because out in Hungary, they've got those mangalitsa pigs and, and, and they've probably eaten what they're supposed to eat. And, and the, the fat is probably very, very good. Mm -hmm. But when you get when you get the pigs that have eaten all the soy and all the, I don't know, old socks and condoms and whatever they feed them, I mean, God knows what they feed them. Man. Yeah. 
But, um, you know, the fat's pretty high in linoleic acid is pretty high in deuterium as well, that other rabbit hole, you know. So it, I think it can have a bit of an effect on on, on people. But I, I say to people, really, you know, I I mean, Sophia, again, she, she I keep mentioning her just because she's fresh in my mind. We chatted so much yesterday about this and she's really not into fasting. Because, you know, she says that, that you know, you get all your all the nutrients you need and all the protection you need from a full on PKD diet. And I believe her. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, you, you get people coming to you maybe who aren't carnivore and haven't understood the link between food and they don't believe you. And and they're like, you know, just eat meat. Come on. You know, they, you get that kind of person. And then, and then so you say, well, listen, just try fast, just try fast or a dry fast couple of days. And you just see how the inflammation dies down. And they and then you, they often they come back and they go, wow, I believe you. My doctor told me that diets had nothing to do with it. And so you can kind of show them in that way that, that, that it does lead them in with that. But a lot of people have heard about it now. And most of the people who come to me are, you know, I've tried carnivore. I've tried this. I've tried that. or But I'm all right with a bit of dairy. I'm all right. And, and that's an interesting one because I think, you know, we were – we were I'd also when we were, it was a shame you didn't get to the Sheffield conference. That was fun. You know, it was, but you know, good to see you there blowing up all the crap, you know, <laughs> with Sean. That time. I love that, that one with the picture split and it's got carnivore and vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> you can see the difference. It's a nice meme there, but I was there. We were there cheering you on. I was sitting there next to Sophia during that actually. And we were cheering you on. It was brilliant. But, you know, we took her out and showed her around the Peak District and whatever. And we went on this walk. And then and then she dropped something kind of interesting on us early in the, earlier in the day. And I put this silly little vid up, you know, with these daft questions for Zofia. It was before the proper podcast. But she said something that raw dairy is actually worse than pasteurized dairy. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. And, and I thought, you see, I've got an open mind. It was funny. So was somebody on the YouTube channel, when I put that up, it came up, Phil, has anybody else told you that you're easily led? <laughs> and I said, what? Because because I didn't punch her in the face as soon as she said it or something. You know, I mean, I, I, I'll listen to anything, man. I, I'll listen to anything. Another one was saying, this woman is certifiable. But actually, her points are quite interesting. Mm. And that is that the main danger with dairy, I mean, I think the problem with the pasteurization is that people can't digest it immediately. So they have better results with digestion mm. from, the raw, from the raw dairy. Mm. But... Her point was that the growth factors in in dairy are left more untouched when it's raw, and so the problems come down the line that you're using um, you're using this dairy, which is only really you know designed to make a small animal into a large animal, and so it has a lot of growth factors, and that can be more damaging and more sort of um, um, cancer risking mm -hmm. in the future than pasteurized dairy and i thought hey you never know that's kind of an interesting one that i hadn't heard before but uh, of course all the raw raw milk guys you know get very angry about that because they have um there's a lot of tales of people healing on on raw meat raw milk yeah. but i i think i suspected and and, and zofia agreed yesterday that it's kind of like those people who have sort of uh benefits from something like gerson therapy you know, initial benefits, but quite often the problems come down the line where you just swap one plant, one set of plant toxins for another, and then, you know, down the line you 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 get problems. And on not only a recurrence of the original issue, but other issues as well. You know, obviously with all the malnutrition and and, and um, emaciation that comes with something like trying to push Gerson therapy for too long, mm -hmm. and maybe the same thing is happening with the people on on the raw milk kind of cures. Yeah. Who knows? You know, it's interesting anyway, and and you know, it's certainly <laughs> you know something to to consider. I mean, my 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 initial thought and response when I was a kid drinking milk, and I loved, I just loved milk. We only drank skim milk though because it was all anti-fat sort of thing, which is a shame. But we, I drank a lot of it. I would I would drink like a gallon of milk a day sometimes. I just absolutely loved it. Unfortunately, I, I wish it had the fat in it. That would have been better, but still drink a ton of milk. And I remember people trying to, you know, say that that milk was bad. Oh, it has all these growth factors and this is and that. So I'm like, awesome. Sounds good. Free growth. 
You know, like I was like, I was, I was more than happy to, to be a, a large adult, you know, male. <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, more milk then. That sounds great. That sounds like a, well, that's, a that's a, that's a great point actually, because you know, bodybuilders and whatever have often down tons of milk. I mean, when I was in the gym and doing a ton of training and got big, I was doing a load, you know, and I'd mix a whole load of protein powders in them and down them and fart all day long, you know, like you do. <laughs> But but I was um, I, it, with the with the milk. I mean, it, here's another possibility that if you're really training, then the growth gets channeled into a, a much more of a useful area. Because again, I was sitting with Zofia at the conference. We were talking about this because <laughs> Sean was there, you know, and he's sitting there with his guns out and he's looking like way better than all the other guys who were sitting around. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was I was talking to him. He was sitting next to me just before he went up there, and I said, "Man, look at those chairs. You know, you can't sit in one of those chairs." <laughs> You've got to get a different one without the arms. You're going to get it stuck on your ass and end up walking around the stage <laughs> with it stuck on your ass. <laughs> so if you notice when he's in that picture, you know, he's got one without the arms on, so he can actually oh. get out of it because there are these tiny little chairs, sort of vegan-sized ones. Oh, but, funny. you know, we, we were talking about this, and, and she was saying, yeah, it's, it, it, it depends on your goals, doesn't it? You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with eating five pounds of ribeye steak a day if, if your goals are building muscle. But when you're in a an autoimmune flare, your goals are very different. Mm. You know, you, you're, you're unable to train enough to build, to put on any muscle, you're probably unable to train at all. And probably best you don't until the inflammation's down. Cause it can, you know, it's, it's just, it hurts and it, it, you know, it, it triggers a bit of inflammation anyway. Mm-hmm. So, you know, at, at that point where, or just some regular person who's, who's very inactive, Maybe then it does go into some kind of uh, unusual cell replication. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Again, we don't know, do we? I just like keeping an open mind, listening to all these people and start not raging and arguing when somebody says something that's a bit different to what you've heard before, you know? Yeah. It would be interesting yeah. to um, you, know, the effects of, of raw milk just in general, you know, on you know, people going through puberty and, you know, and, and, and that's effects on other things. It'd be hard to look at that in isolation. Um, I guess you could do raw milk versus pasteurized milk. I, I doubt that that study is ever going to be done, but uh, it would be interesting, especially at a time when you could channel these growth factors into actual growth and, you know, long bone growth and muscle growth and, and things like that, healthy growth and you get some bunch of Yao Ming's running around, you know, just like just a bunch of raw milk and uh, growth hormone <laughs> diet, just <laughs> smash. Yeah. You know, you never know. You never know, yeah. but I, you know, I, I, I've, uh, I've been just doing so. I haven't been to a gym for ages, but I just do sort of body weight stuff and things here, and get my um, symbol case on my back and do some squats, and or a child on my back and do some squats <laughs> as they grow up. And and you know, I can I can put it back on there. It'll be okay. But um, yeah, you know, my goals in that in that direction are not what they were. But. Um, it's it's just so nice to be lean again, you know. It's like nice to walk around at sixty one years old and and look at all the other guys, even even guys who are quite skinny, and they've all got bellies. The whole lot of them, haven't they? You know, there's always something going on there. Nobody's got a flat stomach anymore. They're either fat or skinny fat, and um, yeah, I'd love to get hold of them all and give them a shake and say, "Listen, guys, you know, it's real easy. You just need to eat some fatty meat, and it'll all disappear." Yeah. Oh, to only have the problems of a fat belly, eh? That would be so simple for, for a lot of people. But, but yeah, I mean, it is, um, it has been a hell of a journey since that time. But it's funny, at those times, you just learn so much. The stuff that I've learned, you know, that I've been able to pass on to, to clients about the little tweaks and things, I seem to do most of my learning by getting as sick as possible and then finding my way out of it. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm not doing it again. I've had enough of that. But, 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 you know, that, that's how you troubleshoot, you know, and, and because you've come across that before someone else were going through that, man, oh, no, I don't, don't do that, you know, and, uh, and, and you can, you can head them off at the pass before they, before they go down that trail and, and really hurt themselves. You can, you can tell them the things to watch out for. I mean, that, that is, that's just how we learn. You know, we, we learned about different parts of the brain and what they do by destroying them. And we damage those parts of the brain. We go, oh God, what, what can this guy not do anymore? You know, or this person has a stroke in this part of the brain. Like, oh, I guess that's what that part of the brain does, because now <laughs> you know, and that and that's how you learn. And unfortunately, you know, someone has to pay for it, you know, to get that knowledge. And that's why it's you know, it's, it's hard 
hard fought and won. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's worthwhile and it's, it's worthwhile to pass that on to people. So, you know, that they can, they can learn from that. Yeah. I think, I think one of the important things really is to tell people something that I heard Natasha Campbell McBride say a long time ago, that there's no point trying to work out exactly what it is in your diet in the last few days that's caused some kind of a flare mm. because it, it can be something that you ate a month ago mm. or even longer, you know, and if you've been backing these things up and say eating a load of dairy when you're autoimmune and, and, um, or prone to autoimmunity, I mean, you can see that the, the track of autoimmunity really, it's like, I think it starts off in the subtle ways and these things take decades to build up. You know, when I look back as a child, I used to get migraines. I was healthy and fit and running around, but, but I used to get migraines and a couple of times I got asthma, which I'd totally forgotten about. Luckily my parents didn't give me any of the inhalers because I think that can just kind of perpetuate it. Mm. Um, there was a, a, something else that Natasha Campbell McBride said was that once you start doing that, you sort of drive um, drive uh, asthma deeper into the body and deeper is a problem and, and you don't allow the lungs to go through that um, sort of spasm and sort of whatever it is that's going on there that then they they you get a sort of natural immunity to it if you like not really in that sense but you, you'll be okay like you know if you have measles you're probably not going to get it again um, and and she she says that you know that's that's the way to deal with that. Although it's frightening for parents when the child's gasping. But I I, I never used to I never used to I never got any inhalers. And I remember, I remember like two or three nights where I got it in bed or something like that. And hay fever, just really severe hay fever every year. And now since going carnivore, mm -hmm. I have to look at other people, you know, to find out whether it's hay fever season. I see people sneezing, and I go, oh yeah, there you go, you know. And I, I don't have that anymore. But I think little little things like that of the of the immune system just not functioning correctly in early life is is a warning sign that that you know your child or whatever might be prone to autoimmune issues so to keep them a, a more strict like my son peter he's he's uh, just eight and you know he looks amazing he's 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 mixed race just beautiful frizzy hair and just so he looks like a little bodybuilder he's fantastic his body is incredible mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh dense and solid and i think we might have chatted about that on the other podcast but he's so heavy but no fat you know and, and he's basically is he's just been breast milk and meat and that's it oh, and uh you know we we brought him up like that and, and he's amazing but early on he was prone to it he probably had some of my genetics or whatever and had some uh eczema and some asthma but the stricter that we keep him Mm -hmm. um the more that 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 just disappears and he doesn't have any of that now but he was sort of he, he you'd, you'd give him like half an apple or something peeled we gave him bits of fruit sometimes and and, and his cheeks would start weeping with the eczema you know just from that but mm -hmm. without um we, we, a bit of chocolate wouldn't do it to him mm -hmm. but fruit would you know but fruit's so healthy man it's mm -hmm. <laughs> It's it was amazing, you know. I, and then I just started putting it in their lunch boxes anyway, just to stop the um, you know the dinner ladies calling the social services that they just had meat, but he wouldn't eat it. You know, he'd come back and he'd go in the bin. But I've even given up doing that now. He just goes in with meat, and that's it. You know, he's gone in with a load of fatty lamb burgers in a flask today, and and that's the kind of thing he eats, and, and, and he loves it, and he's great. But yeah, I think to spot those trends early on is 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 really important because. Sometimes it can be a very slow process. When I look back to um, the early 90s and, and I had a wrist that was really bothering me um, playing drums and it started to really bother me and, and I'd have to sort of go up to the bar and put my wrist in some ice, you know, and I was thinking it was a sprain or something like that. And then they diagnosed it as Kindbox disease, you know, where the lunate bone crumbles and sort of avascular necrosis of the lunate bones called Kindbox disease. And apparently the lunate bone crumbles away and after six months or so it's it's all sorted itself out. And either you have not much problems or you lose the use of your wrist or whatever, depending on how you built. But luckily, because it wasn't that, it was just a, yeah, another misdiagnosis. And, and it probably was this psoriatic arthritis re rearing its head early on because that little bit of sacroiliac problems, you know, in the gym, like sort of eight years later or whatever and that often those arthritic conditions start in the in the sacroiliacs you know when somebody comes to me and says well i don't have much but i do have sciatica a lot and i have problems in the lower back and like down one buttock and the sacroiliac and 
that's always a warning sign for me because a lot of these um, these sort of arthritic conditions can start in that. But it got in the wrist with me as well. And it was it doesn't bother me now. I've got most of the movement back there. But you can see that it's, you know, it, it's lost the movement there. And that was for years. You know, it's okay now. There's no inflammation in it, but it did do some damage in there. I mean, whatever's calcified in the in the in the ligaments and whatever. Maybe I should work at it harder, get moving back the other way. But getting the moving back that way has been fine for drumming. I can still play, you know, fine. But that that sort of thing that we don't, those little whispers that doctors just are not picking up on. To me, it would be damn obvious now. You know, I'd look at that, somebody with hay fever, somebody putting on weight, somebody you know, who who has some sacroiliac problems and then one joint's kicking off, I'd go, yeah, you know, it's pretty obvious what's happening here. Whether you put one of their labels on it, where they call it rheumatoid, psoriatic, reactive, all, all that thing, it's the same process, isn't it, really? Mm-hmm. You know, you've eaten some crap, you've done some things wrong, and here's how to sort it out. And, and that's it, really, you know. Nip these things in the bud, nip them early. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I definitely agree. And... um well, I'm glad that you're you're back on on form. You put back on your weight. You back up to normal weight now, or or where are you at now? No, no, no. Yeah, because I had some fat, and, and the the weight that isn't hasn't gone back on is probably half the weight that I lost off my legs. And you know, I'm walking around now, and I'm fine, and I'm playing drums at gigs and whatever. But yeah, legs legs still need some building up. Probably about another ten pound would go on there if I built them up. In which case, I would have put back on about twenty five of the thirty. Which which. 25 of the 45 that are lost and so that would just leave the fat loss so that's fine by me so yeah I'm, I'm on track and and you know put back about 20 pounds since january and that's not fat so uh, yeah i could kind of come out again it's better the other side than i went in just with a knee that's a bit rickety and needs a bit of work you know but that took a bit of a beating but it was it had taken a beating 10 years ago anyway but when you think that I had it in probably like 30 joints, wow. you know, raging and, and managed to get it out of all of them except two without any damage. Um, you know, the first time around, the ankles were horrific. I mean, I thought they were just going to end up unusable. And now I, I I can't imagine I had ever had anything wrong with them. You know, I got it all out of that completely. But yeah, it, it, one knee and one wrist has taken a bit of a hammering over the decades. But um no, no inflammation. I'm fine now. I'd probably, you know, I can't be bothered with another blood test, but I'm, you know, only when I really need them, do I really need them. But I'd like to snap my fingers and see my CRP now is probably fine. I'm sure, you know, judging, yeah. by, judging by how I feel, it's it's probably fine. But uh, yeah, that was a <laughs> on fire, man. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you're doing better. I'm glad the weight's coming back on and your kids uh, are helping you with uh, the kid assisted body weight squats or <laughs> kid additional body weight squats. Um, and yeah, and, and good luck with that, Phil. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's great to see you as always. Uh, where can people find you and reach out and see your stuff? Uh, well, you know, I've got lots of stuff going on at the moment and, you know, to consults if anybody wants, you know, I mean, Anthony's way ahead here with all the science and all the medical knowledge. But if you want to chat to somebody who's actually been through it now at the other side twice, then I've got some pretty good um, tips and tricks. Um, but, uh, yeah, to, to, I'll put my link tree underneath. That's got most of the things, but one of the things that, um, I'd really like to, to make people aware of is, is what we're doing with the big fat challenge. And we've had everything recorded with like all of the 90 day, uh, 90 days of, of coaching calls an hour a day on the big fat challenge. They're all there. You can see how all these people are improving. We've got, you know, one guy doing beautifully with coming off his heart and diabetic meds and, lovely stuff like that and all sorts of people losing weight as they go along and me putting the weight on, I was going the opposite way to everybody else. And, um, you know, we've got to challenges each week of different things to clean up from your diet and, and in your environment and whatever, and all, all kinds of stuff, um, all sorts of extras and uh, extra courses and books. And we've got our red pill food revolution book coming out, which Right. Honestly, I think is just about the it's it's all credit to to Ben. I mean, five, four of us were on it, and 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 we we sort of did Zoom calls on each chapter, and but Ben put the words together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and honestly, I think it's it because Ben put it together. I can say that, but it's he's a beautiful writer, and 
he has done the most incredible job. And it's, one, I think, one of the best, probably the best thing of the history of our diet and how it's all gone wrong and how we've been fooled by the elites and into plant-based diets and through religion and all of this nonsense and corrupt studies. And, you know, it's not a full-on carnivore book, although that's, you know, obviously uh, um, approved of. But mm-hmm. It is really what's happened to our diet and that kind of thing. And so you get that, and it's not even out yet. And so you get that a PDF and audio book. Actually, I sent you a link to the audio book. Have a listen. Tell me what you think. I, I sent it a while ago. I, I think you've got access to the folder, but it's it, Ben's done it on audio book now. And um, it's really good. The comments we've had back on it are amazing. And we do it as a pay what you can afford. So, you know, you can get it. I think we put it up for $99 or whatever, but, but like, you know, $19 you can get. That's, that's probably the same as the book when it comes out. You get all the other things. But anyway, we do that in the Big Fat Tribe. We still carry on with the calls. If anybody needs some support, I know a lot of people, they can go into carnivory and they're fine. They know what to do. And that's cool and, and, and well done. But if you fancy coming on, uh, there we go. That's uh, www.thebigfatchallenge.com. Perfect. And uh, that's what we're doing. Great. We'll put that in the uh, in the links below as well as your link tree. And so people can find you there. And uh, I hope they do. Bill, great to see you as always. You too, man. Thanks so much for having me on. No problem. Good to see you. Hey, guys. Thank you very much for taking the time out to listen to what I had to say. If you like it, then please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and podcast. And if you're on YouTube, then please hit that little bell and subscribe. And that'll let you know anytime I have a new video out, which should be every week, if not more. And if you could share this with your friends, that would help me get the word out and let me know that you like what I'm doing. Thanks again, guys. Mm